thank all of you for being here. Eighty-five percent of the electrical power in Indiana comes from coal, and every coal mine in the state's in my district, as well as most of the coal, oil and natural gas. My dad was a coal miner, and that's why I'm here today, because of the high-paying job in the coal industry. Mom was a nurse. I want to first of all say I was also a medical doctor prior to coming here, and I know some of the scare tactics I heard from the other side about health issues related to admissions, and that's exactly what it is. It's scare tactics. You know why? Because when you look at a medical study, the first thing you look at is who paid for it. Well, the studies that are showing this type of information, all paid for by left-leaning global warming advocates, based on a model created by left-leaning leaning global warming advocate who has a financial stake in the model and shamelessly published by a, a nationally known organization which I actually talked to about this and told them that uh, I was ashamed of their information. Um, from a health care standpoint, there is no da clear data. It's, it's, sh it's scare tactics to scare the American people. And uh, every time I hear it, it makes me very mad. Uh, the discussion here today is not about whether the temperature of the Earth is changing. Of course it is. It's always changing. When you look at back at the history of the Earth, it's changed for hundreds of years. And uh, you know, the, and the, the other thing is the EPA admits their current regulations will have no effect on this. Um, I want to follow up on what Mr. Collins was discussing about um, uh, energy subsidies. First of all, I believe in all of the above policy. I think we should pursue absolutely everything. But let me tell you, and Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to introduce a few graphs from the Energy Information Administration and the Institute for Energy Research into that the record. Objection, so order. Here's what the facts are, um, and you can see it. Everyone can see it on this chart from where you're sitting. That the solar industry per kilowatt hour is being subsidized at 1,100 times more than coal, oil, and natural gas, and wind is being subsidized at. Uh, over 80 times more than uh, these others. So uh, all of the states in the Northeast, you're welcome. Uh, because the, the taxpayers in Indiana are paying for uh, what's happening in your, in your state. Uh, in the electrical generation sector, renewable energy, 55 percent of the subsidies ge generated 10 percent of the electricity. Uh, Wind, 42 percent of the subsidy, 2.3 percent of the electro electricity generated. Fossil fuel, it is true fossil fuel gets subsidies and it has for a long time. 16 percent of the subsidies but generated the largest share of electricity, 70 percent. And in this chart, um, solar per kilowatt hour, $775.64, coal, 64 cents. Um, so I do think economics is part of the mix here, and we do need to look at economics. And the fact of the matter is, is that as we pursue new technology, the Federal Government should support these technologies. But we also need to recognize what the facts are about what we are doing and whether or not we can, we can sustain this. Uh, Mr. Cash, how close were you to brownouts in the Northeast in the cold winter we just had? And be very short, because I know what the we facts were not, are. We were not close to that. Okay, because that is interesting, because all the energy people in the Midwest tell me that you were within hours of brownouts based on the fact that uh, you had plenty of uh, natural gas, you just didn't have any pipelines to get it to where it needed True. to go. We had constraints. I, wouldn't, I, I don't know if we were hours, but we had constraints and there were concerns. Okay. So, you know, when you eliminate 40 percent of the electrical power generation in the entire United States, which is coal, which is the goal of the administration, uh, get used to it, American people. You are going to not have power 24 hours a day. You are going to have br brownouts. Because the inf infrastructure is not there. Mr. Sopkin, you want to answer that question? Yeah. Uh, what happened uh, with these polar vortices in January and February, uh, many of the baseload plants that are soon to be retired because of EPA regulations uh, came to the rescue. Don't take my word for it. The uh, New York Times headline was coal to the rescue, but maybe not next winter. And I offer this as well for the, for the, for the record. Without um, objection, so order. And, and what happened is that 89 percent of AEP's coal fleet that is going to be retired next year had to be operated to avert brownouts. And on the, on the subject of energy efficiency, Murray State College had signed up for an interruptible program. 
and, and found out to its dismay that actually you do get interrupted. And they were interrupted with five minutes notice, students had to be displaced, and there was flooding at the school. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.